In this video we will be building top bar swarm boxes um, and I will be building them out of pallet wood. Now the audio for this por first portion of the video was so bad that I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to do a voiceover. So we start with pallet wood here and what I'm doing is taking a look at it and looking for square straight edges and good boards. Um, we're going to be joining these boards together to get the correct width in order to make the hives. Now building these is the same as building a top bar hive, the difference being that we're going to be cutting down the length of these boards. On a top bar hive I would use the full length of the pallet board. So once I've selected a couple of boards, I will organize everything I'm going to do and we'll get out the biscuit joiner which I'm going to be using. I picked this up for $25 at Harbor Freight. Um, it's a pretty decent piece of equipment and great for joining two boards edge to edge like this. This is a biscuit joiner. It creates a notch in the edge of the board which you put the biscuits which are in this container in. Um, with a little bit of glue to hold everything together. You'll also need a pair of clamps to clamp the board together. These were two dollars a piece at Harbor Freight, so relatively cheap. And of course you're going to need glue. We line the ends of the boards up. We're going to make marks on these boards to mark where we're going to put the biscuits. So to do that I'm going to need just a straight edge. A straight piece of board will work and I'm going to put five marks on this board across the two boards so that we get the biscuits in the exact same location on both boards. You just want to make sure that that board is straight when you're putting it down to draw the line. Now on a biscuit joiner you've got a mark at the front there and there's one at the back side that let you line up with this mark on the board. And what you're going to do is line that up with your pencil mark, turn it on, and then plunge it into the board and it will cut that hole or that notch that's needed. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the other four notches in this board so that we can get all of them ready. Now if you look carefully at the edge of this board, it has cut semicircular notches into the edge. Normally I would have aligned that to be more center, but it's really not that important on this particular project. And get the other board up and line those notches up. Now as long as I line the mark on the unit up to the mark on the board and push in, all of these biscuit holes or these biscuit notches will line up with each other and then we can glue it together. So I'm going to do the second board the same way I did the first board, line up with the mark and plunge into it. The blade on this unit is inside the metal housing so it's almost never exposed and what I've done is locked it on which it has a, a button that lets you lock it engaged. I'm just moving down the board and putting the notches in. Now we need to get everything together to do this. Um, glue clamps will get the biscuits out here. I'm gonna need five biscuits. If you look close I got a broken one there I didn't notice. but I will in just a minute. And we're gonna need a hammer. So we tilt the board up and we're gonna take this glue and put it into the notches. And we wanna get a good quantity of glue in those notches. Basically, we fill them up. We're going to do this on both boards. 
I kind of like to make sure the notches are full first. So we turn the board up and we go ahead and press these biscuits, as they're called, into those notches. Now, sometimes these biscuits get tight in that they won't slide in easily. And for that, you persuade them with a hammer. It doesn't take much, just a few taps to press it in. Now that I have the biscuits in place, I'm going to go ahead and run a bead of glue down the other board. This is to adhere the length of the board and not just where the biscuits are. Now comes the fun part. We got to get all these biscuits to line up. And it takes a little bit of finagling and working at it. They don't always go together easy, especially with pallet wood, which can be a little bit warped. And I believe I lift these up just a hair and everything lines up. Now, go ahead and hit it with a hammer to knock the boards close together. And then we're going to take these clamps and we're going to attach them on the board and clamp it down tight. Once this board is clamped, it's going to need overnight or 8 to 12 hours for the glue to set up before you can continue this project. So I have two more sets that need to be done and clamped. I'll get those set up and clamped and get them set overnight and then we'll get back on this project. Yesterday I glued up some pallet boards. We got those set up so they're now solid. I'm going to use those for the sides, maybe for one of the ends. I got another solid piece of wood, some leftover from something else that I'm going to use for the end pieces. We're going to go ahead and get that done. And I'm going to show you how it's made. Now, when I made my original top bar hives, I saved a couple of pieces from it. Um, specifically, a few, few of the top bars I made extra. And a piece when I cut the end pieces so that I could get the angles correct. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. All right, as you can see, this is one of the top bars from my hive. I put cleats in it. Now, one of the reasons that I left this top bar off is because I have a big knot here. It's a hole. Didn't want that in the actual hive. So I know that my hive width is this. This is a board where I cut the end in order to get... The angle so I can do the angle cuts to get the end pieces. So remove this up to the end of this board and I'll show you how I originally came up with that angle. So there's my first angle. This is uh, one of the pallet board pieces because I know I want it to be as wide as a pallet board so I can use them on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and mark it here. It's going to be my bottom. Turn this over. Come right up to this bottom mark. Line everything up. Nice and even. Alright, so there's my first one. I got my lines marked on here. We're going to take a circular saw and go ahead and chop that edge off. So we get a good edge, scoot that board down and cut the other one.
All right. We now have one of the ends for our top bar. Yeah, top bar fits it perfect. So that's one. Now we can turn this over, put it here on the end since we've already got one line cut and cut the next one. If you do this, you want to mark the piece that you're using as master. Always use the same master to cut it so that you don't drift that line any. They'll always be the same width. However, I can turn this over. There's three. And I'm going to put a tick on the board. And four. Yes. I will be able to get all four end pieces out of this one board. The reason it doesn't have to be 100% perfect is because any gaps or spaces that you get, as long as they're small, the bees will fill in with propolis. So they'll kind of fix it up for themselves. All right. 